retired ones, so I have a couple questions for you. Um, I, I came here and now I understand that this is strictly an air permit application or dealing with particulate matter. I am assuming that you have a certain regulation that says there is only a certain amount of particulate matter that's allowed in the atmosphere, and you stated that if you see the matter, if it's visible, it's not allowed to be visible crossing the property line. Okay. Have, is there a way, I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a physician, but I also was an engineering major, and there are ways we would measure particulate matter by taking certain machines across property lines and using suction to measure that particulate matter. Do you go out and do this and follow up to make sure they're complying, or is it just uh, they submit their, their, what they say it's going to be, and then it's just assumed to be true? Well, and I'll let someone else correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a property line level, and if there is a level at which a facility cannot exceed, so let's say that there's a level for particulate matter, we do have what's called a HAS dust, which does uh, draw in air and will measure the amount of particulate. However, uh, we no longer have a, 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 a property line level, and so I don't have anything that I can hold the facility to. That's when we fall back on the 111 rules, which is about visible emissions. Now, if we think that there's an issue going on out there, I can use the HAS test to try to find out you know, what the levels are, but there's nothing that I can hold them in violation of just based on HAS test readings. So, so those, there are no levels of readings on that that is considered a violation. For instance, if we go out and we get one of these machines and measure the levels now, then when he's operating mm -hmm. ourselves, get a machine and measure those levels and prove that they have exceeded a certain level that that's not there's the level. levels are gone. There's we don't have those levels. You don't have policy, okay, so they're no longer so 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 truly you're giving an air permit for levels that don't exist. So all all we have to do is see them and that's the that's you the only thing we don't the conditions of the permit. There there is opacity there is opacity limits. Can you explain what that is? Uh, that's uh, maybe. Do you have a question, Okay, good job. That that is the the degree of grayness in the air caused by emissions, and it's a it's a rating. And okay. certain opacity levels associated with the crusher, the screens, and the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, one of the things that we've done, uh, what Alyssa referred to, is that we have uh, done away with our property line standards, which used to be a one hour, three hour particular matter standard, that went away. Right now we do an air dispersion model of the process using an EPA recommended standard procedure and make sure that it meets the EPA regulations for emissions of PM10 at the, at the property line. We have done that to ensure that they have to stay a certain distance away from the property line to ensure that the EPA mandated regulations are not exceeded. And that distance is stipulated in their permit. So what you're doing is looking at the type of rock crusher and how it crushes the rock and there's a calculated formula for how far these particles will go. And that's how you're permitting it. That, that has been established by the EPA and is used as a federal basis, yes. Okay. So, so, there's, so what is the way that we show that these particulate matters are higher going across onto our property? What, what is the way? You're, you've got this formula that says it won't to happen. What is a way that I can go and measure or do to show that it isn't happening so I can make sure that my health is safe? Right, we can monitor visible emissions using method 9, uh, which is an EPA method, to uh, determine the level of visible emissions that are coming off the property. So what yeah. is, can you explain what yeah. method 9 is? It's, uh, reading opacity is determining how much of the background is obscured when the particulate is coming off. Okay, so is there a machine that does that? No, sir, it's our eyes. And so but it's not just somebody going out there and saying right. that, talking about the right. that yes. yes, we do have to go through training. I do have a couple of investigators who are Method 9 trained. Now, any investigator can use Method 22. Method 22 is if you see visible emissions crossing the property line, then um, 
that they don't have to have formal training. But I mean, all my investigators go through training, they know what they're looking for, but they don't have to be method 9 certified to determine that there may be uh, an exceedance of the visible emission level, and that's through method 22. Uh, the other thing that we can look for is if you think that dust is impacting your property is we take tape lists. Now, the thing with tape lists is we go out to your property, we will take some samples, we'll go to the company, take reference samples, and what we have to do is match those up. Now, if the, uh, the samples come back and it's 90% uh, common clay of materials, that's what you're going to find on any dust road that's out there. So it's not just a simple matter of finding material on the property, it's actually tracking it back to the company. And, and you have to do these tests, or can we hire an outside environmental company to do these tests? I mean, do you accept, do you accept any technician who's certified to submit this to you? As part of citizen collective evidence, yes, you can do that. You can do that. Okay. And, uh, but can you provide information where, or how we can hire these people to go and monitor them? There, on, our, on the website, okay. there is, um, where it is on the website, on the right hand side of the main page on the website, there is uh, how to file an environmental complaint. And if you click on that, it'll take you into all of that information. I'm not sure that, is, do we just have the basic stuff on our, on our website? And are y'all still, do we still offer training to people or to groups? Um, when we first adopted those rules, we actually offered training to people on how to find, how to use citizen, or to collect citizens' collected evidence so that you didn't waste your time submitting something to us that we can't use. But there wasn't a whole lot of, of um, interest in that, so I'm not sure we're doing it anymore. And we're getting feedback, and I don't think we can hear too good in the back, so bear with us. We will offer training to anyone who is interested, and we have gone out to communities before, and if you want to know what we need to see in photographs, we can show you. If you want to know how to take a tape of sample, we can show you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Way to go, Doc.